Ladies and gentlemen, it's good to have you back. No doubt you're here for another dose of Destiny news. Well, you're in luck because it's time once again to answer that question. What's next for Destiny? As Season 6 winds down, what content do we have to look forward to? Well, let's effing well find out, shall we? <laughs> Then we've got a hell of a lot to talk about. Like I said, Season 6 is drawing to a close, but there's still some content left to come before Season 7 launches. On April 9th, Bungie's introducing something called Arc Week, plus a new game update that will improve drop rates for some of the game's rarer items. Then on April 16th, we get a brand new spring event, the Revelry. And yes, we're also going to look at a cheeky leak that reveals the new exotics tied to this event. And then of course, we have Season 7, the Season of Opulence, which launches sometime in June. If you'd like to have a sneak peek at what Bungie has in store for us, keep watching. So yeah, we're going to look at all this plus a whole heap of other tasty news tidbits. And to round the video off, we're going to open a whopping 22 spider bounties in the hope of finally getting the Lord of Wolves exotic shotty. And finally, I'm going to pay Tess a visit to open 10 notorious engrams because I still haven't got that effing chicken dinner emote. You'll never eat Okay, so first up, Iron Banner is back. There's new armor and weapons to grind for, plus bounties that reward powerful gear, hurrah. But there are also two new consumables that have been introduced with this Iron Banner. First up, we have the Iron Burden that decreases your power by 100 while playing Iron Banner. And then we have Wolf's Favor that increases your power by 100 in Iron Banner. Now you can purchase the Iron Burden consumable from Lord Saladin for five Iron Banner tokens. And as you can see, when you activate it, it decreases your power by 100 for 30 minutes. The question is, why in the name of mother-loving Jesus would you want to do this. After all, Iron Banner takes into account your power level. If it's very low, you'll find it harder to kill opponents while becoming easier to kill. That's what you call the opposite of fun. So why make Iron Banner even more of a pain in the anus by taking this consumable? Do you really hate yourself that much, do you? Well, there's a triumph tied to this consumable, Anus Unbound. If you rack up 500 kills while the Iron Burden is active, you'll unlock a curated version of the Wizened Rebuke. It's a fusion rifle. And here's some gameplay of it in action courtesy of Aztec Cross gaming. The question is, is it worth permanently damaging your sanity in order to get it? The answer is no. By all accounts, it's really not that worth it. Now, if you want a full in-depth review of this thing, go check out my pal Aztec. There's a link to his in-depth analysis of this weapon in the description box below. However, if you love this kind of grind, well, ignore what I have to say and fill your boots, you iron bastard. Now, if you do decide to go for this weapon, it's worth reading this tweet from community manager DMG. Starting to see some folks reach their 500th kill with the Iron Burden. This triumph will continue to be available through the entire season. Some of you will complete this as soon as possible, where others will take their time. However you approach the challenge, we salute you, so yeah, good luck. And here's another tweet from DMG about this weapon. It reads, Regarding Wizen Rebuke Fusion Rifle with random rolls. Our current plan is to add this to the loot pool later in the season. Players will have to earn the curated roll for it to drop with random rolls. This is in development and it could be delayed. It will not be included with update 2.21 in early April. So yeah, if you want a chance for this weapon to drop with random rolls later in the season, you're going to have to grind the 500 kill Iron Burden bullshite. Now, the other new Iron Banner consumable is the Wolf's Favor. This one increases your power by 100, and it's really for low power players, so they at least have a fighting chance in Iron Banner. It caps at 700. Now, these consumables have a chance of dropping from daily heroic story missions, Vanguard Strikes, Nightfall Strikes, Flashpoints, Gambit, and weekly milestones from Ikora and Hawthorne. Now, as you can see, my first Wolf's Favor consumable dropped after my third Vanguard Strike. Right then, it's now time to find out how many dirty snitches there are among us. Bungie released this rather interesting stat that shows how many Guardians pledged their allegiance to the Vanguard and the Drifter. As you can see, 69.9% of you guys sided with the Drifter, whereas 30.1% of you went full on snitch mode and cozied up to the Vanguard. How could you? I'll let the Drifter deal with you, punks. Whoever or whatever you think I am, you're wrong. How's that suit you? Snitch. Now I gotta confess, I was in fact one of those dirty little snitches and so every weekly reset I can collect a gift from Ikora. I get a powerful gear drop, an enhancement core and three boons of the vanguard. And if you sided with a drifter, your weekly reset gift is a powerful gear drop and a whole heap of gambit synths. Next up we have week two of the Invitation of the Nine. We learn that the emissary was in fact once a guardian, a titan called Orin, which is why you see that ghost shell next to her. Interesting fact, the ghost shell appears in numerous colours, mine was green, the significance of this? No idea. 
dear mate. And for week three, we get, well, check it out, this huge creepy Morosov apparition that slowly turns her head towards you spooky. We also get some disturbing dialogue that says that the queen is in peril, that she will be annihilated, and that she will beg for death's release. So yeah, shit is certainly getting weirder. Expect more enigmatic shenanigans as we unlock more invitations. And just in case you were curious as to what's in the chest, you get a new piece of lore, and you also get a powerful gear drop. Okay then, so that about brings us up to date with season six, but what's next? Well, like I said, we're getting something called Arc Week on April 9th. Now, Bungie's been pretty secretive as to what exactly this is. All we know is that we'll be celebrating Arc Energy, whatever that means. Expect Bungie to spill the beans about Arc Week fairly soon. Also on April 9th, we get a brand new game update that will increase drop rates for some of Destiny's rarer items. Let's have a look. For example, drop rates for the Dreaming City, Ghost, Ship, and Sparrow will be increased, which means it shouldn't be so painful now to complete the Curse Breakers title. Now, Ghost Shells have a chance of dropping from Ascendant Challenges, the Sparrows have a chance of dropping from the Weekly Dreaming City Story Mission, and the Ship from completing encounters in the Shattered Throne. So yeah, good luck. Next up, the drop rate for 1,000 voices will also be slightly tweaked to make it drop a little more often than usual, but it will still be a rare drop. So expect to keep on grinding the Last Wish Raid. And the Last Wish Raid Ghost Ship and Sparrow will also have their drop rates significantly increased. Plus, Bungie's also increasing the drop rates for Lore Books, which is good news for all you lore nerds and triumph score chasers. Also in the April 9th update, Ada will begin offering all weapon frames for you to choose from each week, rather than just three of them. Here's what Bungie said. We understand that players are on the hunt for new and exciting roles on their favourite Black Armoury weapons. Since Black Armoury released, there have been a few instances where sniper rifle or machine gun frames didn't appear for many weeks in a row. From April 9th onward, Ada 1 will begin offering all weapon frames each week for you to choose from. So then what happens after April 9th? Well, we get our final event of Season 6. 6, the Revelry, which drops April 16th. Here's how Bungie describes the event. The first spring event for Destiny will reveal a familiar forest in bloom with fresh loot. So it looks as though we're going to be revisiting the Infinite Forest, which for this event will be transformed into the Verdant Forest. Now, a leak reveals that once the Revelry arrives, you'll need to visit Ava Levante in the tower and then complete a run of the Verdant Forest. Now, this emblem can be earned as a rare drop while delving beyond Branch 4 in the Verdant Forest. So yeah, we'll be clearing out enemies in the Verdant Forest in order to progress through its branches and earn loot. And check it out, there's also Verdant Forest Bounties to complete. This one is called Verdant Light. You'll need to defeat 25 enemies inside the Verdant Forest with your super. Completing this will award you with this Spring Fever Consumable, which increases your ability recharge rate and stacks up to three times. Now, using these consumables will no doubt help you clear more branches inside the Verdant Forest in order to earn better loot and complete this event's triumphs. And that's not all that's leaked. Thanks to a weird glitch, Destiny player Archer discovered this jubilant engram in his kinetic slot. Now, this is the new engram that will be available for the duration of the Revelry event. And yes, he was able to inspect it and look at all the new jubilant engram loot. So you know, it's time for a loot montage. Now before we move on to Season 7, let's not forget about the Arbalist. This is a Season 6 exotic that has yet to be discovered. Now this is a linear fusion rifle, and like I said, it's still a bit of a mystery. So guys, how do you think we're actually going to eventually get this? Leave a comment below and let me know. Okay then, I think that's Season 6 pretty much done. Now let's move on to Season 7, the Season of Opulence, which will go live sometime in June. Now Bungie has revealed that they will be adding new ways to earn enhancement cores in Season 7. Scrapper bounties are being removed from the game, and in their place, the Gunsmith will now offer a selection of daily and weekly bounties that can be purchased for gunsmith materials. Now these bounties will reward an enhancement core when completed. So yeah, this will give players more control over acquiring these precious materials. Bungie also revealed that the Graviton Lance, Sunshot and Sweet Business Catalyst will be reintroduced in Season 7. So if you haven't already got them, you can grind for them. And now it's time for a breaking leak that dropped while I was making this video courtesy of Reddit. Now this Reddit poster claims to have gathered info from Anon the Nine. Now to those of you who don't know, Anon the Nine is a very reliable 
reliable source for Destiny leaks. Now, according to Anon the Nine, we will return to the Leviathan and discover the source of Emperor Callus's power in Season 7. And get this, there will also be the return of two Destiny 1 exotics, Hawkmoon, an exotic hand cannon, and Dark Drinker, an exotic void sword. Now, Dark Drinker was my absolute favourite exotic in Destiny 1, so if this does indeed return, I'll be very happy indeed. However, leaks are always best taken with a pinch of salt, so don't get too hyped just yet. Now, I've linked the Reddit post below so you can check it out for yourself. Okay, then it's now time for my favourite part of the video, time to hopefully get my hands on some sweet precious loot. Now, as you can see, I've got a whopping 22 spider bounties to open. I'm hoping that one of them will drop the exotic shotgun Lord of Wolves. So I've got a lot to get through, so let's just get down to it. Here we go, we've got an enhancement core, always a good start. These things drop enhancement cores, obviously, some of them do, so that's always a good thing. Those are very hard materials to get. Okay, we've got a little cheeky little triumph as well. We're just getting some trash at the moment. What I want to see is that exotic drop. I want to see a, an exotic drop there. We've got another enhancement core. That's pretty good. But we want the Lord of Wolves exotic shotgun. Now, these bounties actually take quite a while to do. Um, it's good for the enhancement cores, like I said. I, I'm not. I'm very happy with those. But can we please get the Lord of Wolves exotic shotgun? Because, you know, it'll be nice to finally get that after all this time. Let's just burn through these. We're getting a hell of a lot of trash at the moment. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna get rid of all of those. Hopefully, get some more enhancement cores from them. Okay, so can we get it? Oh, here we go. We got it. We got Lord of Wolves. That came in effing clutch. That's gone straight to the postmaster. Very happy with that. So yeah, that's excellent. We we got Lord of Wolves, and um, that's that. Let me just open this last one. Brilliant. Okay, let me go to the postmaster and check that out. I'm very happy indeed. Who <laughs> effing raw? And here it is, people. The Lord of Wolves shotgun. I finally got it after all this effing time. It dropped at 697. I'm going to grab that. Tasty. Okay, let's now move the F on. Okay, then it's now time to open 10 notorious engrams. No, 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 notorious. Can we go two for two and get that effing chicken dinner emote? I wish you a painful death. Right then, let's do this. Hopefully we can get that chicken dinner emote. Who knows? Can we get lucky for the second time? We got the Lord of Wolves exotic shotty, which is nice. But, you know, can we now top this off and get the chicken dinner emote that's been proving very elusive indeed? Come on, can we, can we get it? Can we go two for two? Can we be lucky as F? or not. Let's have a little look. We got, no, we got an exotic sparrow, another inspired idea. Um, can we, oh, we got rock out, so we're getting some good exotics. That's like, I like that. I do like that. Can we, we get, we got three exotics. That's good, but we didn't get the chicken dinner emo, so that still eludes me. F me. Okay, that brings us to the end of the video. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a cheeky thumbs up. If you hated the video, confuse me by giving it a cheeky thumbs up, lol. Subscribe and turn on notifications to keep up to date with all the latest Destiny shenanigans and click on screen for more content from me. Thank you guys and we'll speak again soon.